And now we've got the last point here, uh, pot odds analysis, bet sizing calculator in and out of position, and the Hold'em replayer, which I think we'll look at here after we cover the post lot bets as such. Uh, but right now let's definitely take a look at this bet sizing calculator and see how all of this works out mathematically. Okay, so this calculator I've set up, um, you see here break even equity is in black, uh, fold equity is in red, and what fold equity is defined as here is the percentage that you'll need your opponents to fold in order to break even in the long run. That means if you make a bluff bet, what is the percentage of the time that you need your opponents to fold in order for you to make a profit or to break even over the long haul. All right, that's in red. Uh, everything in black is the percentage that the person needs to make that call. So you see here we have bet size. We have two bet. All right, the two bet call. That's the equity that they need to make that call to break even in the long run if they are to go all in pre-flop. If they're not to go all in, this is the percentage that they need to flop a favorable situation in order to play on. Uh, three bet, as we had before, this is an open raise, or a first raise. This is a re-raise. This is a re-re-raise, the four bet. And the five bet is a re-re-re-raise. I hope that's clear. The FE is, again, the fold equity needed if you are making a, for example, a five bet bluff, which is rarely clever. <laughs> okay, um, we've got small blind, big blind, and our scenario here is uh, NL100. That means the small blind is 50 cents, and the big blind is just one dollar. Makes it also very, very clear and simple for all of our calculations, and this is um, the scenario that we're going to be working with here in the future. Um, in the replayer, I think we've got a lot of NL50 um, examples, as well as NL100 examples for you guys. So, um, But for here, just to make it simple, uh, in a 100, small blind 50 cents, big blind one dollar. We'll take from there. We've got here limpers one, two, and three. You can add that yourself. Uh, and you've got here the first raise of the two bet underneath. So let's say there's no limpers, and somebody decides to make a textbook raise or textbook raise two, four, to four big blind. I've put here 2.5 to 3.5 big blinds for steals, as we just covered uh, briefly. But let's say he just makes an open raise. 2-4 from early position. All right, whatever. He's holding ace king, and yeah, he makes his standard open raise to four. Cold caller would be when somebody after the fact only calls that raise. That would be a cold caller one, two, and three. You can add that yourself to play with these numbers. Um, but what we're going to do here is initially look at the scenario where we don't have any cold callers, we don't have any limpers, we don't have any three bet callers. And it just goes down the line like that. So we've got one guy who open raises to four, couple folds, and this guy decides, no, no, my pair of queens are good, and I'm going to re-raise. So he raises textbook, again, three times the initial raiser, plus one per cold caller. All right, so that makes it 12. So he raises it to 12. The guy behind him says, no, 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 <laughs> I think my, uh, whatever, say so he has a pair of jacks, and he's a little bit crazy, and... You know, after early position raiser and a re-raiser, he decides his jacks are good and makes a four bet, 230. All right, so that's still only one third of a hundred big blind stack. Um, so at this point, some people would even push over the top for a four bet. Um, or you can argue also because you still have a lot to play with after the fact with a hundred big blind stack. Maybe you just make a standard, yeah, two and a half to three and a half um, times the three bet raise, and right here we've got uh, two and a half times this. So he raises it up to 30. Good, and the guy behind that says, no, 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 ladies and gentlemen, my kings are fantastic, and I'm going to push for my entire stack of 100 big blinds as a five bet. And yeah, that's precisely what happens. The total pot size would be 147 at that point. And if everybody was on a big stack, that means um, everybody's got 100 big blinds in their stack. That's how this would look now. What does that mean for every individual after the fact? Okay, if we just break it down here, um, we have one open raiser, everybody else folds down. Okay, action comes back to the small blind. In order for the small blind to call the two bet, he needs 
38%, 39% equity to do so. If he were to go all in again, and if he's not to go all in, if he's just going to call the three and a half big blinds cold, then he needs to have this percentage probability of hitting a, a favorable flop. Uh, flop. Big blind at the same time, uh, let's say the small blind folds, big blind's on, he needs 35% equity um, or 35% probability of hitting a playable flop. Um, that's, yeah, that's profitable for him in the long run. That's how that looks. If this guy here was raising to four on a pure bluff, he needs both of these guys to fold 72% of the time to make that profitable in the long run. And that's what this calculator shows you. Let's say he then gets a uh, three bet, everybody else folds, action comes around to the small blind. The, uh, the guy here needs, uh, the small blind here needs 39% to make that call all in um, in the long run. And again, either 39% if he's going all in or 39% probability of hitting a playable profitable flop. And that's how that breaks down all the way down for a 4-bet call, 5-bet call, etc. This gets much more complicated when you look at different limping scenarios. And say that we have one limper here. And I've got this kind of automated such that um, the textbook <laughs> raise is already inputted for you. Um, four times the big blind plus one per limper is raising two five big blinds. Hope that's clear. If we have two limpers, guess what? Four times the big blind plus one plus one equals six. All right, and that's how that works out. Good. So, and that's how you should do this. But again, a lot of you guys are asking, okay, why? Why six? Why not uh, five or three or two or whatever? Let's say it's only three at this point. Look at what that does for the equity for these guys here. Okay, so here we've got six. These guys still need 36%, 35% to make that call if they're to go all in. And they also need that percentage to hit a playable flop. Now, if they're playing any ace-x hand, um, let's say ace-king or ace-queen, they're only going to hit um, one of those top um, top cards are better 32% of the time, which means that they're losing money in the long run, especially when they're playing out of position. Um, this is the idea behind it. All right, so why four times the big blind plus one per limber? Well, precisely this. Um, you don't have to. You can change it up. I mean, you can make it you can make it whatever you like. But the lower the amount is that you bet the more likely you are to get called because your opposition is getting better odds.